മുൻ ഈണം നൽകിയ ആലപിച്ച ഭൂതിലോകം എന്ന കവിതയിലെ ഏതാനും വരികളാണ് ഓൺ ദാറ്റ് നോട്ട് ഐ വെൽക്കം യു ഓൾ ടു ദ എയ്റ്റീൻത് എൻറ്റോമെന്റ് ലെക്ചർ ഇൻ മെമ്മറി ഓഫ് ലേറ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ കെ എൻ ശ്യാമസുന്ദരൻ നായർ ഫോമർ വൈസ് ചാൻസലർ കെ യു ഇൻ ദ പീരിയഡ് ഓഫ് മാർച്ച് നയൻറ്റീൻ നയൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് ടു ഫെബ്രുവരി ടു തൗസൻഡ് വൺ He is well known as an administrator and a scientist as well. His contributions to the farming community when he was the member of the planning board and later as a vice chancellor of KVU is significant. Every year, an entrofment lecture is being conducted to commemorate the services rendered by him for the progress of agriculture and welfare of the masses. To begin with, let us listen to the KVU invocation song. please be seated now i now i invite dr mani chellapan dean college of agriculture ku uh, to deliver the welcome address most honorable vice chancellor kerala agriculture university dr b ashok distinguished guest of the day dr vp joy ias chairperson kerala public enterprises selection board and a former chief secretary government of kerala respected register dr a sakiru singh respected director of research dr madhu subramanian director of education dr gobakumar director of seed and planting material dr anita dean college of forestry dr anu university library dr lada adr 
डॉक्टर प्रसाद सर डॉक्टर गेदा कुटी मैम डॉक्टर मसी कुटी प्रोफेसर एंड प्रोजेक्ट कोऑर्डिनेटर सेंटर फॉर जेंडर स्टडीज बिलाउड फैमिली मेंबर्स ऑफ डॉक्टर श्याम सुंदर सर डियर फैकल्टीज स्टूडेंट्स ए वेरी वॉम वेलकम एंड ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल वी आर हियर टूडे फॉर द एटीन डॉक्टर के एन श्याम सुंदर memorial endowment lecture this annual lecture has been supported by the fund instituted by the family and organized every year since 2006 by the center for gender studies of kerala agriculture university this center was instituted by the uh, late Shyam Sundaran sir, he was instrumental. He was a visionary. He had a lot of other achievements also. We remember the legacy of uh, Shyam Sundaran sir through the endowment lecture organized every year in the month of July or August. It is one of uh, the university's uh, signature event. The first lecture was given in two thousand six, immediately after. Sir, sir, demise on twenty fourth July. To, owing to its importance, the endowment lecture was attracted many outstanding scholars and policy makers. The eminent speakers for the eighteenth Shyam Sundaran Sir's memorial endowment lecture is uh, Dr. V. P. Joy, IAS, and is a chairperson Kerala Public Enterprises Selection Board and former Chief Secretary Government of Kerala. on behalf of the center for gender studies and all the participants gathered here and also on my personal behalf i welcome you sir to the endowment lecture <laughs> our honorable vice chancellor dr b ashok is the guiding force in organizing the endowment lecture right from the planning and implementation sir has been monitoring and directing on behalf of all the participants and on my personal behalf i welcome you sir to the lecture our respected registrar dr sakiru singh is here to present the memento to our dignified speaker dr vp joy sakir sir is uh, always uh, been uh, supporting us uh, through all the productive Uh, endeavors of the university i welcome sir to sir to this function i welcome uh, dr gopakumar the director education to offer the tribute to the late dr uh, shamsundar sir i am privileged to welcome you sir to this session Uh, Dr. Uh, S. Madhu uh, Madhu Subramanian is here. Sir is a very well-known bio control specialist. Sir is here to introduce the chief guest. I welcome you, sir, for this function. I welcome you. Um, all the family members uh, i do not know whether they have joined uh, online i welcome you all um, family members of dr uh, shamsundan sir especially uh, dr dr anupama vishaga madam roshni menon ranjit menon uh, those who have joined on online for this program we welcome you all to this program let me also welcome uh, dr uh, Anup is the host of uh, this uh, program. Uh, welcome you, sir, for this function. I uh, welcome Dr. Mercy Kuti, Professor and Project Coordinator, Center for Gender Studies and Agriculture and Farm Entrepreneurship Development, to this session. I all heartily welcome all the participants who have joined online and offline to the 18th uh, Dr. K. N. Shamsundaran Memorial Endowment Lecture. Welcome you all. Thank you very much. sir 
Now I invite Dr. Excuse me, uh, uh, I did not hear the audio. Uh, have I been called? Am I audible? You're audible, sir. Okay. Have I been called or is it my turn? Uh, there was some gap in the audio there. Yeah, it was some problem with the audio, sir. Let them let them rectify. Thank you. Forestry College can just confirm whether uh, my audio is through, then I can speak. Thank you, sir, for the welcome address. I welcome Dr. Mani Chalapan, sir, also uh, to this program. Now I invite Dr. B. Ashok, Honorable Vice Chancellor KU, for the presidential address. Honorable Dr. V. P. Joy, my distinguished senior colleague in the service and now the chairman of the Public Enterprises Selection Board, uh, distinguished colleagues in the dais, Dr. Mani Chalapan, Dr. Gopakumar, Dr. Madhu Subramanian, Registrar Dr. Zakir Hussain, and Dr. Mercikuti. Since we are a little behind schedule, I would cut out any lengthy intervention and uh, make way for uh, Dr. Joy's commemoration lecture, endowment lecture. May I just uh, uh, remember uh, uh, Dr. Nair, whom I also consider my guru, uh, but I was not his student per se. He was not in the university when I completed my graduation. Uh, I think he started in 98 uh, as vice chancellor in the university uh, and uh, served for three years or so. But I knew him intimately uh, due to his association with the State Planning Board. And he was extremely affectionate uh, to me as a, uh, a young student also. And I remember vividly that uh, I troubled him uh, for my uh, reference, which he very kindly wrote from his residence uh, in Patam, where I had visited him and uh, which was accepted in, in 2004 in the University of London uh, when I tried to pursue my master's there. So there is no harm in uh, uh, retrospectively calling him my guru. So it's such a pleasure to sort of join uh, the uh, uh, this meeting in remembering him. Uh, Dr. Nair's contributions have been uh, listed out. Uh, it, has, uh, it, is, it is there for the record. I need not take you through the whole thing, the Gender Studies Center, his, uh, de his role in developing the Galasa program, his uh, intervention as a, uh, as a development economist is too well known to, 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 to be repeated. And we are very fortunate to have Dr. V.P. Joy, uh, who is, uh, uh, I would rather say that he combines many hats in his uh, persona. He has been a civil servant for uh, 35 years uh, plus, uh, donning a lot of responsibilities in the state and center, including uh, departments which are uh, extremely uh, important for a state's development. In the center also very important positions which I'm sure somebody will uh, uh, will specify. Uh, he also pursued his literary and uh, scientific career uh, very assiduously during his uh, rather uh, preoccupation with uh, civil service. Uh, I think he went on to do a few academic programs culminating in his doctoral from the uh, IIT Delhi, if I'm uh, correct. And he continued writing profusely, developing on his uh, 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 a student status as a budding poet, even when he was a graduate student in CET, his reputation as a young poet uh, preceded his uh, uh, reputation as a, as a student of great excellence. And if I remember correctly, his score in uh, GATE uh, of, that, of the year which he appeared for it uh, probably remains a record even now, or it, 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 it remained so for... Uh, so it, he's a versatile uh, person. Uh, with, uh, I really do not, can, uh, I cannot remark about another individual. I, I, I've met, I've been fortunate to meet a lot of remarkable individuals, but somebody who deals with uh, poetics, uh, somebody who deals with uh, philosophy, uh, I'm sure he's a very good mathematician without which he cannot be a very good electronics engineer. And uh, just about the other day, uh, somebody from VSSC was telling me that uh, 
during the couple of years he worked in the VSSC before coming into the IAS, uh, he seems to have uh, sort of coded uh, most of the programs, the basic programs which uh, probably is, are still used in uh, this uh, satellite mechanics. Uh, I am unable to describe it in my language, but uh, so then, therefore uh, 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 a delightful combination of a, a lot of uh, tastes, uh, which he has been uh, you know, uh, very, very uh, steadfast to cultivate for such a long uh, period. So that is the delight of the person. So my personal welcome to Dr. V.P. Joy. It's such a delight that you could join. Now, just a remark about the theme also. I'm very curious to hear from uh, uh, Sri Joy on, the, on his lecture. Uh, did we lose connection? I think we lost it. I think they lost it. They lost it. Am I audible that side? I think I have lost your vision. No, here it is audible, sir. I think some problem with the. Uh, you are in uh, Trivandrum, right? Oh, yeah, yes, sir. I have right. <laughs> that does not help. Uh, I'll call Namir sir. No, they can send it right. No issue. Anyway, I was through almost. Sir, you can continue. Uh, it's audible now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll continue. So uh, on the topic, I just want to say there is, in fact, uh, uh, this uh, whether Kerala is developed adequately is a question which uh, uh, is discussed and what it should do to develop more, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, uh, we in uh, public service also perceive that uh, developing the state to the its optimum uh, uh, pace of economic output is one of the uh, tasks with the development administration. Uh, there are some claims in, uh, in the draft of the speech which was uh, written to me, and uh, you, you find a very strong... Uh, articulation of this idea that Kerala is indeed a very developed state of India and I have no quarrel with it. It's uh, who, who doesn't like his own uh, native land to be rather developed rather than uh, undeveloped. Uh, but the yardsticks which you adopt, which we adopt uh, to declare a place, region, city, uh, etc. to be more developed in comparison with the rest of uh, its uh, peers in that category, uh, need some sort of uh, you know, uh, objectivity in that sense. I found, found a few assertions uh, in other literature as well, that the per capita income is comparatively better, uh, the, uh, the consumer uh, uh, expenditure per capita is higher than the other states. Therefore, uh, conventionally, people say that uh, this state is better than more developed than the other. So depending on the yardstick, many states will qualify in India to be highly developed states. Uh, uh, and, and the competition between states have been on, and uh, I'm sure every state has uh, now claimed to say that it is developed in some aspects th than the others. Uh, if you take uh, growth in industry and uh, agriculture, I'm sure uh, Tamil Nadu's numbers will give a, a very good run for Kerala. Uh, if you take a few other numbers, some other state could uh, be outshining us, but Kerala has its own native strengths as well. So after my uh, uh, visits elsewhere, uh, and studying for a few years out of the country, outside the country, getting exposed to how the uh, the classic European uh, states uh, sell themselves or present themselves uh, is by very uh, simplistic, uh, simpler yardsticks, which we should take a look at. Uh, for example, uh, uh, once a, a professor there told me that it is very it's very easy to see whether a, a place is developed or not, or a place is good to live. Uh, like you choose a neighborhood in a given city, how do you choose a neighborhood uh, to live? Uh, that neighborhood is best where everybody wants to wants wants to sort of move into. It's as that simple as that, and therefore you need to watch only whether people are voting with their feet to be in that particular uh, territory or city or uh, place. So if you, uh, for a country, if more people are, if it's uh, citizenship is more in demand, definitely uh, more people want to share the fruits of development there. 
similarly, cities which are accepting a lot of residents, new homes being built and people moving in, uh, it is a sure short sign that, you know, that area is holding promise, particularly when people choose residents, they choose a better future for their for their kids. So they are choosing also better schools, better uh, universities, better educational opportunity, and most importantly, lower taxes and lower costs uh, of living. Uh, so one should see whether uh, a place is competitive in that spirit. And I'll, I'll just also mention, probably to sort of introduce a, uh, a countercurrent to your discussion, uh, an interesting lecture which was once given by, I think, Professor Ricardo Kaufman, uh, who used to be the uh, finance minister for uh, Venezuela. I had opportunity to receive his course once. And uh, uh, he said, very interestingly, that uh, Ashok, uh, uh, see, uh, the, whole, the whole point is you got to see whether a place is growing on its its natural buoyancy. So he, he was of the opinion that it, one should not be measuring state intervention. You should see that normal tendency in any organic ecosystem is for individuals, organizations, people, uh, states, regions to grow. It's, it's a fairly natural tendency. So if you see a state like uh, he then mentioned, I'm talking about 2010 or so, if Bihar is or Jharkhand is less developed than or less developed than it should be, you should analyze uh, not what you should put to it, but what is stopping it. That's very important. It's important to understand why this tiger is not getting its prey. What is the cage? What is the cage which is holding it back? That analysis is very important. So I'm just mentioning this because these are different perspectives uh, to look at a fairly uh, interesting scene of Kerala development. Uh, one can uh, uh, really spend time looking at this. I'm so glad that Dr. Joy accepted our uh, invitation and agreed to speak to us. I'll stop here and wish his uh, lecture all the very best. Uh, fantastic, have a great evening and uh, I'm standing back to hear from him. I'll be here at this end. I'm once again very sorry that I could not really travel to Trishur today. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We apologize for the interruptions due to technical glitches. Next, I invite Dr. Gob Kumar S., Director of Education, KU, to give a tribute to the late Dr. K. N. Shyam Sudharan Nair, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a warm uh, good afternoon to one and all. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, the Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. V.P. Joy, former uh, Chief Secretary, Government of Kerala, Registrar, Dr. Sakir Hussain, Dean of Forestry, Dr. Anub, Dean Forest, uh, College of Agriculture, Lanakira, Dr. Mani. Um, other uh, director of research, Dr. Madhu Subramaniam, um, coordinator, Dr. Mercy Kuti, my former teachers, Dr. Prasad and Dr. Um, Gita Kuti, and other uh, respected colleagues and my dear students. Not taking uh, time uh, other uh, to mention other things, which I think I will be able to speak about uh, the former vice chancellor during the course of my tribute. I'm straight away going with your permission, straight away going to <clears throat> deliver the tribute to Dr. K. N. Shamasundaran Nair. <clears throat> Dr. K. N. Shamasundaran Nair was an outstanding agriculture scientist, eminent planning expert, and uh, able administrator. His contributions to the progress of agriculture of the state will be remembered for long. His meritorious services as member of the State Planning Board of Kerala and as Vice Chancellor of Kerala Agriculture University are praiseworthy. Uh, Dr. Nair was born on 16th February 1936. As an exceptionally illustrious student of his times, he was committed to secure the degree of BSc honors with high esteem from the Central College of Agriculture of the University of Delhi during 1956. After rendering seven years of agriculture services elsewhere, he had undergone higher studies to obtain the postgraduate degree of 
Master of Science in Farm Management in 1965. Later on, his continued pursuit in agriculture enabled him to earn the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Agriculture Economics from the Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi in 1972. Thereafter, he served at the State Planning Board as Deputy Director and Chief of Agriculture between 73 and 1980. Subsequently, being appointed as the Agriculture Economist under the FAO program at Ethiopia, he served there during 1980 to 89. It was also to his credit that he could function as a renowned agriculture management expert in countries like Afghanistan, Bhutan, Nepal, and China. Besides, he was also identified as a distinguished fellow of the Center for Research on Sustainable Agriculture and Rural Development, Trivandrum, and Emma Swaminathan Research Foundation in view to fulfill his desire to promote sustainable agriculture. Recognizing his abilities and managerial expertise, the government of Kerala inducted him as a member of the State Planning Board during June 1996. He also adored um, prominence as the most humane vice chancellor of the Kerala Agriculture University between March 1998 and February 2001. The most cordial atmosphere prevailing during this period prompted him to conduct the first ever convocation of this university the Center for Gender Concerns in Agriculture uh, was also established in the university with the long-term perspective to develop it as a national model for excellent academic pursuit. The university also played a very prominent guide role in the implementation of the People's Planning Program of the Government of Kerala during this period. After demitting the vice chancellorship, he served in the Kerala Commission on WTO and Agriculture as vice chairperson. The commission chaired by Professor M. S. Swaminathan was also able to identify and bring out the emerging consequences and impact of WTO agreements in Kerala agriculture. Dr. Nair was a person of sterling qualities with a lovable nature, always with a smiling face. He was kind and considerate to all and sundry. I would like to um, share a personal experience. Uh, in fact, I was not in the main campus. I joined in 1998. I was posted at Ambalayal. I was there. And uh, one late evening, that is by about uh, 2 o'clock in the uh, early morning, he came to Ambalayal because the Ambalayal was hosting the executive committee, one of the executive committees at that time. And it was in 1988, and he came with a laptop and the laptop was having a uh, holder, plug holder socket, which was not actually fitting into our conventional uh, plug line and all. And he wanted an alternate socket, which was, uh, sorry to say, not available at that uh, point of time in Ambalavel. But he was, uh, uh, he actually had a very smiling face. He, uh, he, because his laptop was down and he had very important documents to study at uh, two o'clock in the morning. But still, he was he put up a very cheerful face. And next morning, when I came to the uh, office by about seven o'clock, I was seeing him in a mundu and with a torth mundu on his uh, shoulder and walking through the all the fields and all the next morning. So that was the kind of person Dr. Nair was. Always his inclination was to do selfless services, and he sincerely worked for the betterment of the deprived groups. This cardinal aspect of his character most often enabled to identify himself as the friend, philosopher, and guide of the subordinates whenever, uh, wherever he served. In this respect, he was more a practical person than merely a theoretician. Besides, it is undisputable that irrespective of the positions he adorned, he was endeared by one and all in the true sense of the term. The single trait alone is enough to excel the humbleness he showered in every walk of life. As the rule of destiny unfailingly operates, his towering personality bid farewell to this mundane world on 24 July 2005 after a brief period of illness. While mourning his sad demise, it is fitting and proper to commemorate the signal services rendered by him for the progress of agriculture and welfare of the masses in India and abroad for about four decades. In short, his name will be enshrined in the annals of history as one of one among the lovers of mankind, 
who strived hard towards developing an egalitarian society, overcoming hurdles. Let us console with a prayer that posterity will take spirit to emulate his high thinking, symbol living and dedicated services while discharging duties for the national progress. Such kind of an attitude and commitment is inevitable to accomplish his dreams into reality. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for sharing your memories. Now I invite Dr. Madhu Subramanian, sir, Director of Research, KEU, to introduce our chief guest, Dr. VP Joy IES. Thank you for the opportunity for such a rare privilege. Uh, Dr. B. Ashok, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Kerala Agriculture University, Dr. Joy, uh, Chairperson, State Public Enterprises Board, and the former Chief Secretary of Government of Kerala, dignitaries on and off the dais, my colleagues, past and present, like Dr. Muralidhar Prasad, sir, Gita Kuti, ma'am. Uh, other senior faculty members, students, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> like I said, I must, uh, I must start by thanking the organizers for this opportunity. When I, uh, it was indeed a privilege to introduce an eminent speaker, as we have always had uh, for Dr. Shamsundar Memnair's uh, memorial lectures. But as I went through the achievements and accomplishments of Dr. Joy, my sense of privilege turned into awe. And later on, it ended up in, 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 in a questioning my own eligibility, my own worth in introducing a person of such eminence. Uh, for such is the huge list of his uh, achievements and accomplishments over the last 60 years of his life. Uh, let me start by introducing Dr. As uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor said, a very good student, Dr. Joy, uh, started the his growing list of accomplishments as a rank holder from the College of Engineering Trivandrum, uh, graduating as an engineer in in, in uh, electronics and communication engineer engineering. He went on to join as a scientist in the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, worked there for two years and then left it. Uh, what turned out to be the loss for science turned out to be a gain for administration as he joined uh, Indian Administrative Service in 1987, starting his career, very illustrious career as a sub-collector of uh, Vinod. He went on to adopt several positions like uh, director of uh, Scheduled Caste Department, Director of Collegiate Education. He was the collector in Arnaldum District, then went on to become secretary to many and hold many important portfolios like agriculture, transport, uh, and uh, so, uh, several other departments also, like, uh, and ultimately uh, the finance department. He was a principal secretary in the finance department. He has also had a fairly long stint in the central government, in the, in the ministries of uh, petroleum, energy, in the cabinet secretariat, uh, and also several, several uh, other postings in the, during his uh, long career of 36 years. Now, he has also held, he, during that period, he has also adorned uh, directorship of more than 31 public enterprises, starting with uh, NTPC, then going on to Konkan Railway, then KSCB, he was chairman of KSCB for a period, KSCB, Cochin Shipyard, the Damodar Valley Corporation, uh, Cochin Metro, the Konkan Rail, KSRTC, and the last lake, uh, Water Metro, which was launched during his tenure, I think last year. So a growing list of nearly 31 uh, public enterprises he had uh, adorned as a director. And he was also a member of the 
syndicate of Cochin University, uh, sorry, uh, Kerala University, MG University, Calicut University, a member of the Senate of QSAT, is a life member of the Indian Institute of Public Administration, New Delhi, and currently, even at this age, and having retained from active public administration, he is still uh, a, a honorary science uh, professor at the Indian Institute of Technology, Palgad. Now, uh, in a career that most would be proud of, Dr. Joy was not uh, ready to rest, uh, rest on his laurels and his academic quest. He kept fueling that by uh, adding more and more laurels to his credit. Uh, an MBA from Birmingham University in UK, an MPhil in, in uh, public management, public administration from IAPM, New Delhi, and a PhD from IIT Delhi are just a few to remember him by. And finally, in the, at the age of 51, as recent as 2014, he was selected as the Giorgio Ruffolo Postdoctoral Research Fellow in the prestigious Harvard University in 2014. So administration was never a hindrance to his uh, academic acumen. And uh, during the course of his academic forays, he has published eight publications, six of which are in international renowned journals. So uh, he was not a, a mean academic either. He was in his own right, he could have walked into any university in India or abroad as a faculty member. Uh, that's just the beginning. I, like uh, Dr. our Honorable Vice Chancellor was saying, uh, the other facets remain of Dr. Joy remain equally impressive. For example, he is a literateur of acclaim, having published three uh, English books, mostly of a reflective nature. He has published two novels, 14 collections of poems, which have won six awards, like the Mahakavi Ullur Award, the, the Editachin Memorial Award, and the SK Patagard Memorial Award. So a list that anybody would hold in now. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to thank Dr. Joy for accepting our invitation. The topic that he has chosen for the day, like, uh, like uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor was saying, is again, one of the most discussed topics in Kerala today, development. And he is one of the most eminent person to talk about it authoritatively, given his vast experience in, across the different uh, developmental sectors in the state and his intimate knowledge about the same. So let us welcome Dr. Joy to deliver the 18th Ken Shamsundarinath Sir Memorial Lecture Award on development scenario in Kerala in the current perspective. Sir, thank you very much and the stage is yours. Thank you, sir. Once again, I invite Dr. VP Joy IAS, Chairperson KPCSB and former Chief Secretary, Government of Kerala, to deliver the memorial lecture on development scenario of Kerala in the present context. My brother, Ovi, sir, in service and uh, Vice Chancellor of Care, Kerala Agriculture University, Dr. B. Ashok, who is presiding over this function, distinguished uh, professors of the Kerala Agriculture University, Dr. S. Madhu Subramanian, Dr. S. Akir Usain, Dr. Mani Chellapan, Dr. Anup E. V., Dr. Gobagumar S., Dr. Mercy Kutti M. J., and uh, all other distinguished uh, persons assembled here on this commemorative lecture on our late uh, Honorable Dr. K. N. Shyamasundaran Nair. I am really honored to be invited to deliver this lecture. During my service, I have had some interactions with uh, the late Dr. K. N. Shyamasundaran Nair. While he was uh, vice chancellor here, I was the district collector at Ernavalam in the neighboring district. And uh, as was mentioned here, the decentralized planning campaign was going on. 
So we had some interaction in that context. And later on, in 2003, I became secretary of agriculture, animal husbandry, and dairy development departments in the government of Kerala. At that time, also, uh, we had some interactions along with uh, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan uh, and Dr. Shyamasundaran Nair. Both of them were guiding the agriculture department. Our Honorable Madam K. R. Gavriyamma was a minister of agriculture at that time, and uh, she was very fond of the academics. Both of these, and uh, both of them, and always used to consult them, get their views, etc., on how to take uh, the agriculture sector forward in the state. And in that context, I have met him and interacted with him, and I remember his uh, scholarly approach to issues and also his wide experience, not only within our state but uh, nationally as well as internationally, as a very well-known agricultural scientist, practitioner, and uh, an expert in agricultural systems. So during his uh, life. He had he has he had contributed substantially to the agriculture sector, not only of Kerala but nationally and other even in other countries. So such a wonderful person and also a leader in his own con in his own uh, right because he was a great leader in the agricultural education sector by leading the university to greater heights and greater glory during his stewardship of this great institution. So, in all these uh, contexts, he is a person very uh, to be remembered, and I'm happy that um, the Center for Gender Studies, which he founded here, has been organizing this uh, commemorative lecture every year in July, the month in which he, uh, his demise took place in 2005. And indeed, it is a pleasure to be here with you to discuss about. Uh, Kerala's uh, development scenario in the present context. It was mentioned by Dr. Ashok in the beginning that our state has carved out a unique niche in the development uh, landscape because it has got its own, it has traced its own path in the developmental uh, progress. It's a unique path which has been highlighted by many institutions and uh, several academics. Uh, who are studying development as to what is the right way of, right uh, direction in which a state must progress when it approaches a subject like development. Development is a subject which is close to the, which is very important for any state, any country, even for the entire world, because it has got a particular paradigm. Every development takes place in a paradigm context, in a context, in a paradigm. It has perhaps a philosophy behind it, and also, every country moves forward in the through a specific pathway of development. So while a country tries to uh, become more and more developed, the, the paradigm or the philosophy with which it is approaching that issue, as well as the direction in which it is progressing, these are very, very important. Because after all, it is very important that a direction is always more important than magnitude. You are all aware. Sometimes I speak to school uh, children ask what they what to distinguish between scalar and vector. They say scalar is having magnitude, vector is having on magnitude and direction. Very nice uh, distinction. But uh, what is more important, whether it is, is it magnitude or direction that is more important? Another question is asked to them. Then they start thinking a little bit. Now, if, and of course, a, per, a person, suppose he comes to say okay, this lecture in different uh, with the different speeds, some by cycle, some by car, high speed or low speed. If their di direction is correct, they will reach and attend the lecture, whether they may be late if they are coming by a slower vehicle, that's all, but they will come here. But if the if somebody is traveling with, with a very high speed, but going in the opposite direction, he will never reach the destination. So that is the difference between direction and magnitude. So direction is definitely more important than magnitude. And therefore, even in the, in the development context, the direction in which a country takes towards development is a very critical aspect, which, which requires a lot of planning and deliberation, etc. That way, Kerala took a 
definitely a, a specific direction, a different, unique direction in its development pathway. And we have achieved a lot, as was mentioned by Dr. Ashok. Today, we stand first in the, the state to stand first in the sustainable development index in the country for the last four years consecutively. This is a state with the least poverty. This has got a very glorious uh, credentials in terms of literacy or highest 100% uh, literacy or um, uh, several health indicators, including life expectancy, infant mortality. And uh, so in the health and educational sector, in the, uh, in the poverty alleviation sector, in uh, environmental indicators, in several areas, uh, we have got a great achievement uh, in the na at national level. And many of these things have been noticed at international level as well. So the state has done well, I would, I would like to say. But then uh, this is not without challenges and problems. That also we are aware. The state uh, has its own challenges while it deals with the development. And when it thinks of the future pathway, what is the direction in which it will it should go forward in tackling the current issues and challenges while uh, trying to take an accelerated movement or path in its forward progress. These are the issues which uh, confront uh, development. And if you if you look at uh, the world scenario, development, there is a kind of uh, classical uh, system in which many countries developed. The Western countries, the European countries, they focused on growth. So a uh, post-industrial uh, in industrial revolution in the 18th and 19th, 19th centuries, these countries focused on economic growth in the, uh, and this economic growth. Uh, and then uh, with the help of the industrial revolution, they achieved very high per capita incomes. And then they took the stand that uh, the trickle down theory, whereby this uh, uh, progress, these uh, fruits will be, you know, spread to the population. And they try to achieve higher quality of life for the citizens. So that is a kind of a mainstream approach to development which happened in the world in the past two centuries. Now, some other states like countries like India, which became independent only 70, 75 years ago. So we had to have a different kind of approach to development because we did not have the time or you know initial um, capital capital uh, support to take that route in the take the sort of mainstream route so we had different uh, pathways were taken towards development to accelerate development and that in that context kerala took a different pathway many theorists many people many scholars have challenged this mainstream philosophy also whether development is merely economic growth and uh, basically how do we define how do we look at development as a particular topic, many a time development is defined as the, uh, as the uh, pursuit of or employment or deployment of financial, um, then human, then living, non-living, all resources to achieve the, to satisfy the needs of the people and also to achieve higher quality of life for the people. So this is a generic idea of development. How do we have we deploy all our resources at our command to achieve a higher level of uh, life, uh, quality of life for the people, how to satisfy the needs of the population. This is the idea of development. But then uh, the question, economics says human needs and wants are unlimited, but the um, uh, uh, resources to satisfy them are limited. This is a standard economic uh, you know, base from which we start. So if you start satisfying all the needs and wants of individuals, there is no end to it. So that is why probably the issues of limits to growth came up. In 1972, some scientists from the MIT produced a report called the limits to growth. They said that the way in which the natural resources of the world are getting exploited, the entire uh, the, the world will face a depletion of resources and then, then the world will be get pl will plunge into poverty and uh, uh, and um, uh, economic uh, uh, and lack of wherewithal for the people to survive here by the middle of the next century. That is what they wrote in 1972. Say, said that uh, the world will achieve reach its limits to growth. So confronted with this kind of scenario, where the traditional view of satisfying all the wants and needs 
and then uh, exploiting the resources uh, in, without uh, any any restriction will lead to a situation where we will be impoverished in the times to come we, with that kind of modeling which our which, which the scholars were able to do then development was looked looked at a different perspective in the world and this aspect like in the united nations itself they set up certain commission for to look at this and the gh bradland who was a norwegian erstwhile well, earlier norwegian prime minister who chaired the commission brought out the report in 1987 and in that report they brought this idea of sustainable development they brought a report called the common future what is the, the common future for the humanity if this kind of pathway this kind of route is taken forward where we will reach when they looked at it they found that uh, we need to redefine or uh, have a, a different direction for achieving development which they called uh, sustainable development and sustainable development uh, was defined uh, as a development uh, which will satisfy or take into account the uh, needs of the present generation without uh, compromising on the ability of future generations to satisfy their needs so while we try to uh, try to satisfy the needs and wants of the present generation we should not uh, like in the economic the traditional classical economics uh, parlance that uh, needs and wants will expand so much that there will be no resources for the future generation that way we should not exploit resources what we should do is we should uh, judiciously exploit uh, or use the resources such that the future generations will be able to satisfy their needs also this is what is called the intergenerational equity so we need to provide uh, for the intergenerational equity as well as the uh, equity for the people in the same generation both intragenerational equity as well as intergenerational equity equity are critical while we look at development and therefore development must become sustainable and then uh, of course people thought of ways and means by which uh, we can achieve sustainable development so we need to have uh, realistic uh, wants and needs and then we should ensure that uh, these needs are satisfied for all the members of the humanity all the people and then the population the of the world should be uh, should be you know at the sustainable levels so that uh, all the people in this world can be provided with uh, the basic wants basic needs so this basic needs approach was uh, taken up as, uh, as a part of a sustainable development scenario and uh, from there uh, the uh, ruthless exploitation of environment for uh, in increasing the uh, increasing the production or uh, uh, for satisfying the, and the needs of people that was looked down upon or downplayed later on by that report now this report came up came out in 1987 and uh, in the last uh, uh, decade since the report came some actions have taken place in that context uh, which were propelled by the by the challenges of climate change which was highlighted later now climate change is a phenomenon which uh, has forced uh, today humanity to look at uh, the development pathway which we, we must take we, which we can take because climate change is earlier it was mentioned uh, people thought that it is only climate change is only you know a fiction a fiction of some people but today the overwhelming scientific evidence have accumulated so much that uh, climate change is a reality staring at us every day in terms of uh, you know the the changing weather patterns or uh, excessive uh, uh, weather events climate events or uh, rising temperatures rising sea levels and so many other uh, such problems so it, when climate change uh, uh, became a major issue again development was looked upon in a very uh, different context how do we as attain sustainable development now kerala as far as our state is concerned so we of course a growth approach is very important we are also looking at a growth how to increase and maximize the growth for the state but at the same time we are also looking at sustainable development indices 
there are 17 goals for sustainable development which we are pursuing that's why I, I said in the beginning that we stand number one in the country in the achievement of the sustainable development goals in the last uh, during the last four years so this su sustainable development uh, focuses on something apart from mere growth economic growth sustainable development focuses on something called uh, human development so it is not economic growth alone that matters it is not uh, you know per capita income that matters many a time per capita income does not have much significance because if there is a uh, this uh, inequality if it is very high in a society per capita income is just a figure which has no real meaning the income may be concentrated in the hands of a few people and uh, the, if it is not available to the uh, the population at large there is no point talking about per capita income alone now when we talk of human development, it is a different thing. Human development in terms of the health indicators, the literacy, the educational aspects, and uh, the quality of life for the people. How, what kind of quality of life is available for the people at large? So this human development was taken very seriously in our state some decades back, many decades back. And uh, Kerala approached this human development issue by looking at uh, uh, by taking up a reformist agenda. There are several reforms were done here. I mean, the pro most prominent was the land reforms, which Kerala pursued with great vigor. During the 60s, almost uh, uh, you know, 50, 60 years ago, Kerala, was, Kerala implemented the most comprehensive land reforms in the country. So along with the implementation of this kind of reformist agenda and the focus on human development, uh, even before that, Time human development became popular. We pursued the various aspects of human development like health, education, etc. in the state. So human development was pursued in a very serious manner by the state, by the government, by various um, organizations here, so that we could achieve a very high level of indices of human development, of which I mentioned at the beginning that we stand at a very high pedestal today in that context. So that is a great achievement. So, uh, but uh, so that is why Kerala presented a unique model, even for the scholars who are studying development, the people who, the experts who study development, Kerala presented a unique model. There are several models, several pathways, which different countries took in the development uh, uh, journey, which they undertook. For example, the East Asian countries, the so-called East Asian tigers, they took a different path. They took a purely growth uh, path in the sense they took a, a growth-led uh, investment path and then tried to increase the income, national income or GDP of the country. And of course, they uh, during the 90s, that approach was very, very successful. But uh, that at a, at a very serious cost to the environment in those countries. So the environment in those countries uh, deteriorated substantially. During, because of that uh, extreme push on you know uh, growth without any restraints so that is what uh, they suffered perhaps uh, kerala did not uh, took that kind of uh, did not take that kind of approach we focused uh, on the twin um, uh, path pathways of growth as well as uh, human development because of which uh, uh, the state is today in a even 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 uh, uh, the income in per capita income in the state is also uh, more than the national average not only that the state uh, is having better e e equity better distribution of this income among the population that is why in poverty in multidimensional poverty index kerala stands kerala today is a state with the least poverty that is that is an indicator of the fact that we have been quite successful in distribution of income in a in a more equitable manner so human development on one side and of course focusing on the growth but uh, our challenges uh, happened in this context uh, where we, in the growth uh, on the growth side we could not progress uh, to the extent we wanted or we planned see our productivity in agriculture or industry could not uh, rise to the levels we would have wanted it, wanted them to be. Uh, so the state uh, achieved uh, even our GDP today is mostly uh, substantially 
but more around two third of our gdp is contributed by the service sector not by uh, agriculture or the industry so again we is, it's a unique model where uh, stay uh, countries progress from agricultural development then to industrial development then to services led uh, growth but we perhaps uh, skipped one of these stages and directly leapfrogged into the services led uh, growth uh, scenario now that is why our uh, industry and agriculture could not uh, uh, progress to the extent we wanted them to be now today we when we stand at this particular level our the problem before us is what what is what is it ahead for the for us in the today's world scenario and today the entire world it is concerned about uh, the climate scenario and uh, how to achieve a development without much without harming the environment the entire european union they are trying to achieve climate neutrality we also our country has declared that uh, climate neutrality is our objective and kerala state has also put the uh, target that uh, we will become a climate neutral state carbon neutral state by 2040 so this kind of uh, uh, targets when we have put in that context what kind of developmental uh, approach we should take what developmental paradigm should be most suitable for a state like uh, ours here when we look at it now having achieved substantial levels of human development index even comparable to that of developed countries but with per capita incomes of a very fraction a, a small fraction of such developed countries kerala is definitely a, a miracle in the in this context so by better equity by better distribution of wealth we have been able to achieve a human development index compared to even some of the developed countries of the world so from that context when we look our challenge is how to sustain this kind of uh, human development and how to make it further better and how also to achieve better per capita incomes in order to get a, a higher quality of life but at the same time uh, we are constrained by the carbon neutral targets which we have set up set for ourselves in the today's uh, environmental context so sustainable development uh, achievements which we have made needs to be sustained uh, retained here while trying to achieve these goals of growth as well as uh, uh, our quality of life increase improvement now when we pursue this kind of objectives which are some of them are a bit conflicting we perhaps have to look at uh, we have to perhaps uh, now it is the time has come to redefine our paradigm of development from human development to human excellence so so far we were talking about uh, human development in the sense that uh, we would like to provide to all citizens a better health better education literacy etc and uh, uh, you know uh, basic conditions water uh, housing and uh, this kind of essential essential basic needs of life that was our objective now in the times to come especially in a in the world where technology is changing very fast and uh, uh, in a world which is becoming more and more knowledge oriented so it is time that uh, we should put a target of human excellence which is uh, the next step the next level of human development uh, which which we must, which we can aspire for and what is this human excellence human excellence uh, is human be all the people in the in our state or society rising above me the mere level of literacy or um, basic education etc how they can become contributors to a knowledge society what kind of skills and knowledge we can impart to the people so that they 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 can uh, they get opportunities to express themselves and kind of uh, achieve what actualize their objective objectives in life it was abraham maslow who suggested that personality in, in one of the personality development theories in, in management abraham maslow says self actualization is the highest of human needs 
apart from the basic needs basic wants when when they are satisfied people look for higher and higher needs and self actualization is the highest of human needs so if people are able to pursue that higher and higher levels of human needs then they achieve excellence in life and that human excellence is what we must look for so in this context see many a time the as i said in the beginning that traditionally countries were trying to achieve the uh, mainstream idea of growth by economic growth mere economic growth but this idea is also under challenge many countries which uh, pursued that kind of approach and tried to achieve higher income and uh, more and more consumption without any limit that kind of uh, uh, those countries which tried to tried to take that path now they also are having a rethink just like the european union etc because of the reason that uh, human happiness is not directly linked to uh, economic prosperity only so this is uh, now there are several theories of human happiness i would not like to go and uh, delve into such uh, aspects in this short lecture but uh, it is a fact that human happiness is not a single is not is not determined by a single dependent variable independent variable like economic prosperity human happiness has got several other dimensions so in the happiness index there is a, a happiness index of the countries which is being published in which our country achieved a rank of 126 out of 137 countries in the latest ranking so in india perhaps uh, we have to uh, look at how to improve this ranking what kind of development paradigm what kind of uh, developmental thought um, uh, developmental pathway will lead us our population our people to a higher level of happiness is is a is a, is a very important thing which we must uh, think today in this aspect uh, i would like to say uh, that our state kerala is slightly better off in this regard like there is a study there is a study which has come out recently about the happiness indices of various states in the country in which uh, kerala stands fourth in the various among the various states number one state is himachal then uh, maharashtra then uh, odisha then fourth is kerala so even happiness index also we are somewhat at a higher level now but of course since our country is at 126 there is a huge scope for improvement in this regard and uh, this happiness as we as i mentioned earlier is not a it is not achieved by a single parameter single variable of uh, economic growth so how to achieve human happiness it uh, a lot depends upon achievement of or pursuit of human excellence so if you are able to pursue human excellence and define the parameters which make up human ex- excellence leading to self actualization for individuals which is not dependent only on economic prosperity or economic growth so perhaps that will chart out a course for the state in future which will which will be the right approach which we can try to achieve in the state in its developmental journey so we need to make ourselves a knowledge society and our uh, economy has to be redefined and uh, redirected or re channelized into knowledge pathways so this is what we are attempting now so we are looking at uh, the technologies the, no, the and it is not only technologies for wealth creation it is very important that education as a, a human development or human excellence when we look at it it is not just uh, technologies or knowledge for wealth creation only it is um education for human excellence how to achieve uh, you know human self actualization through education and knowledge how to develop a knowledge society which will uh, create uh, individuals uh, cre- create a happy society this is the issue which we have to grapple with this is a direction in which we have to move forward so for that purpose of course we have to look at uh, the latest uh, technologies apply them Uh, in our various sectors to of course improve our economic growth because today uh, though we have achieved substantial human development as i mentioned earlier there's a lot to uh, go, move forward in the direction of 
economic growth. So therefore, say even in the agriculture sector, um, I find recently a book written by one of the scholars here uh, about innovation in agriculture. He mentioned that uh, there are several technologies in the agriculture, especially the digital technologies, the smart uh, agriculture or smart uh, digital technologies where information is processed into knowledge. And that information processed into knowledge can assist in uh, agriculture, which is much more focused and which is much more able to uh, deliver higher productivity. So this kind of uh, application of technology in every sector, agriculture or industry, in the industry with the focus which we have taken now is how to generate uh, more and more employment, how to generate uh, more and more employment to reduce unemployment, to address unemployment problem in the state. Because we find, and then uh, these are issues we, which we must uh, take up by reorienting or uh, uh, redesigning our education system. So uh, our education system, in the higher education system especially, needs to uh, uh, look at these aspects in the right perspective. So our higher education system has to achieve excellence. If we are aiming at a society, a knowledge society, a knowledge economy, and if we are trying to achieve human excellence in the near future, our higher education system has to reorient itself with these objectives in mind. So we today we find that uh, many youngsters from Kerala who, uh, who want to pursue higher education, they are going to all countries of the world. They are traveling to almost uh, name any country in the world. Our students are uh, trying to go there. So perhaps uh, one re uh, the, the reason could be about uh, the, the, uh, the, the quality of education, which they may be thinking that uh, in such countries, uh, education is having better quality, higher education, or they may be thinking about uh, the better opportunities for the job, which they can employment there. Whatever is a motivating factor, this is a fact today that our youngsters are trying to pursue education abroad. Now, this is a sign. In, in an economy or in, a, in, a, in the direction in which a society should move forward, when we examine that, we must look for signs. So we must look for positive as well as negative signs. Positive signs are good. We can uh, you know, strengthen them. Negative signs, we must uh, look at. So the, those negative signs need to be addressed as challenges. So if, uh, if in, the, in the suicide rate, Kerala is, a, is stand very high, it is a negative sign. So we, it is a challenge for the state, how to increase the happiness index further so that we can address challenges like uh, suicide in our state. Or um, uh, like this exodus of people for uh, you know em employment or education outside. So that is a sign. So what are the corrective measures? What are the corrective systems we must apply to address these kind of challenges, to create a knowledge society, knowledge economy, excellent, human excellence uh, in in population. So um, in the economics, there is a traditional concept called full employment equilibrium. Full employment equilibrium means a society which is able to achieve an equilibrium of skills and talents of its population such that, and of course its production systems, such that these things get aligned and all the people get opportunity to employ their talents and capabilities so that the economy becomes is able is is able to produce in the most efficient and in the most uh, um, productive manner the economy is able to function that kind of full employment equilibrium is the aim of societies many a time many western industrialized countries achieved this equilibrium through heavy exports so in fact they were not consuming everything that they produced employment equilibrium was there but whatever they produced they were exporting to some other countries so today, export-led, uh, and many countries pursued even export-led uh, growth as a conscious policy in their development uh, pathway. Many, they, for example, the East Asian economies, they grew up, uh, inclu including China. They pursued uh, this export-led uh, kind of economic growth uh, concept. Now, today, the chances of doing such uh, things, uh, of course, it is there in the world trade uh, how to increase our uh, involvement, how to increase our percentage. So these are 
issues we must we must look at for which we must uh, achieve more and more skills and become more, more and uh, a higher level of knowledge economy the the uh, cutting edge technologies and whether it be information technology digital technology artificial intelligence nano technologies or uh, some uh, or, or biotechnologies all these technologies are to be you know pursued and the and the research and all in these areas need to be focused by the state that is why kerala has established several centers of excellence for addressing these um, research areas and uh, uh, emerge as a uh, knowledge society in the near future so uh, in conclusion what i would like to suggest for our state's uh, development paradigm is that the the classical or the mainstream paradigm is no longer workable practical in today's context we cannot have a, a production based a growth based uh, development paradigm because the concept of development itself has undergone change in the in today's world so the 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 ideas of sustainable development the ideas of human and development etc have taken root and of course looking back we find that the pathway which kerala has taken so far has not been so much in the wrong we have we have perhaps been able to so far take advantage of our uh, of equip by equipping our human resources and uh, utilizing their skills uh, our people are able to work today in many countries of the world and contribute to their economy at the same time contributing to the economy of the state also so we have very good uh, human capital here uh, here our diaspora is uh, is uh, having excellent skills many of them are coming back so uh, how to capitalize on these uh, positive things of positive achievements which we have made so far and how to uh, take them forward by rede- redefining our direction to move in the path of a knowledge society and also to achieve human excellence which is an objective much beyond the so called human development how to achieve human uh, the self actualization and needs of the individuals here so that we gen- we create a society of happy individuals in the happiness index our state moves forward so these are the some of the directions or some of the uh, salient uh, features of the developmental paradigm which we can pursue in today's context and um, i'm uh, happy that uh, this uh, opportunity to deliberate and discuss on kerala's development has been provided by the agriculture university uh, today uh, and uh, in commemoration of the contributions of dr kn shyamasundaran nair and um, i am sure that this university agriculture university which is a leading institution which uh, imparts uh, which is a knowledge leader in one of the key sectors of kerala's uh, economic activity which is agriculture and uh, related areas allied areas will deliberate on this developmental paradigm which the state has to pursue in the times to come and will take necessary steps to aid and uh, help the state in achieving its progress in the developmental scenario in the future with these words i remain thank you very much thank you sir for the informative lecture now i request dr a sakir husain registrar kau to come forward as to present a gift hamper as a token of gratitude and respect to the chief guest I also request Dr. A. Sakir Hussain, sir, at District KAU, to share a few words. Okay. Moving on, 
i request uh, dr mani chelapan sir d c o k u to please come forward to present a graphite drawing uh, to the family of the doctor of late dr k n sham sundaran nair sir uh, his family has joined us uh, online in the hybrid mode please uh, to unravel the graphite drawing and to present it to the audience and uh, to the family of uh, dr late dr k n sham sundaran nair sir thank you sir as we can see uh, the family of uh, late dr k n sham sundaran nair sir has uh, joined us online so i request uh, his daughter dr anupama nair to speak a few words uh, and share some memories with us ma'am it's visible ma'am please uh, can you please unmute the video Uh, ma'am it's not audible can you uh, please press the symbol of mic like to unmute it okay thank you so much i apologize for the technical difficulties there i was on my phone and i was having some problems i want to sincerely thank the everyone at the kerala agricultural university for continuing to um to maintain this endowment lecture and give us an opportunity to remember our father my brother rahul nair dr rahul nair uh, is also uh, on the line today and i know both of us and our uh, extended family want to extend our grateful thanks to dr vp joy for his amazing um expansion on uh, kerala development and the context in which um we need to uh, look at not just uh, the uh, gross domestic product but the actual uh, self worth and uh, uh, the uh, advancement of uh, the uh, individual uh, within the state um, i know this was a cause uh, very near to my father's heart and uh, i greatly appreciate uh, your presence here today sir uh, for your presentation uh, i want to thank uh, um, dr um, uh, asho Uh, the vice chancellor um uh, dr mani chelapan dr gopakumar dr hussein uh, all for um your presence here today as 
well as the audience for your uh, time and attention and continuing to uh, allow us to uh, keep alive uh, the uh, work and um, the uh, concerns that my father had. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing us to participate. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, Thank you, ma'am, for your words. And um, the graphite drawing, which uh, we had presented and unraveled, was drawn by Reshma P, who is an, uh, pursuing MSc Entomology in SV Agriculture College, uh, Ajarya in Shiranga Agriculture University, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It is beautiful, and we will treasure it. Thank you. Now, um, I invite Dr. Anu Pivi, Dean, College of Forestry, KAU, to give the felic felicitation. Good evening, everyone. I will not take much of your time. Already we are late. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. B. Ashogayes, who presided over this function. Dr. V. P. Joy, who is presently the chairperson of KPACB and former Chief Secretary of our state. Dr. Madhu Subramaniam, Director of Research, Kerala Agriculture University. Dr. Sakir Uzain, Honorable Registrar of this university. Dr. S. Kobuguma, Director of Education and my own colleague in College of Forestry. Dr. Mani Chalapan, uh, Dean of the College of Horticulture, College of Agriculture, Kerala Agriculture University, Vilanikara. Dr. Mersikuti, who is spearheading the Center for Gender Studies and Farmer Entrepreneurial Development of this university. My own uh, teacher-like friends and well-wishers, Dr. Gita Kuti, Madam, Dr. Mulida Prasad, our librarian. My colleagues, uh, Dr. Anida, Dr. Lada, Dr. Anil Kuruvela, and all other faculty and students have gathered here to witness the 18th Shamsundaranayar Kain uh, Shamsundaranayar Memorial Endowment Lecture, the 18th of its edition after it started. At the outset, let me uh, thank the organizers for choosing this venue, which is the College of Forestry, which is under the Faculty of, Ag Faculty of Forestry which is one of the three faculties of Kerala Agriculture University. And secondly, I would like to thank the organizers for choosing the right person for the right job. And the paradigm called, or paradigm of development is everybody's hot topic. Uh, well, uh, we are, you have heard from the horse's mouth, the right person with this given right kind of expertise, qualifications, vast experience across several sectors. And we've been seeing him in the television all the time during the time when he was the chief secretary. Uh, he took us uh, through a journey of uh, development where we are right now, poised to become a knowledge society and trying to fill the, uh, not just the developmental aspirations. He had just mentioned that Development in our context or economic growth in our context is not just development of the economy per se based on gross, gross uh, domestic product or GNP or uh, per capita income. It is also a measure of gross national happiness. In fact, sir, I think you would have heard about this thing called Bhutan. It was the first country to use gross national happiness instead of GDP. Norway tried to, although it's not fully perhaps economists won't agree with that. Yeah, the happiness do matter. You just said that we are fourth in terms of happiness in the country. I don't debate that, but uh, correctly spoken, we have to transform ourselves looking at the exodus that is happening from uh, this state to all across the world. And given that we were focusing more on uh, service sector than on production sector, and now we are at crossroads as far as economics is concerned, or the economy at large is concerned. And we do have to take a, a future course that will be taking us, as Sir had rightly pointed out, without you know, spoiling the ambitions, the, the, the very own living of 
future generations which are which are without en encroaching into that without touching upon the environment leave it as our forefathers gave it gave it to us and then uh, try to fulfill the aspirations that uh, we are now based on how much happiness we have so uh, it's easier said than done but let us now don't monetize everything but base your developmental goals of course there is this uh, circular economy bioeconomy everything that the fao has been talking about from the experience of the european union from their context but as far as our countries it's uh, it's not just talk that is enough we have to do a lot more uh, for our future generations at least i'm stopping because of the positive time i thank you once again have a nice day thank you sir to conclude i invite dr mercikuti mj professor and project coordinator center for gender studies college of agriculture kau to deliver the vote of thanks winning to all honorable vice chancellor dr b ashok sir distinguished guest of honor dr vp joy sir dignitaries on and off the dais respected family members of dr kns naisa faculty members and my dear students 18th endowment lecture is indeed an honor to the memory of the most respected kns naisa entire ku fraternity has joined to pay respect to the great visionary and outstanding agricultural scientist with humane approach it is my privilege to place of record the heartfelt appreciation to all who have made this endowment lecture a memorable one on behalf of kerala agriculture university i would like to express our sincere appreciation to our distinguished keynote speaker dr vp joy ias chairperson kpesb and former chief secretary kerala state government his scholarly insights on the much debated topic have been both enlightening thought provoking generating new ideas and perspectives on this critical subject we are truly grateful for the time and effort that you have invested in sharing your invaluable wisdom and expertise with us your contribution has been inspiration to all of us and we are honored to have this opportunity to benefit from your knowledge and experience thank you sir for sharing your time and wisdom i place on record our heartfelt thanks to our honorable vice chancellor dr b ashok sir for presiding and addressing this event despite his hectic schedule his valuable support and guidance right from planning to implementation is remarkable thank you sir for leading us from the front as always i also take this opportunity to thank the beloved family members of dr dr i'm sorry dr kns nair sir his doctor dr anupama ma'am his son dr rahul nair and other members being online with us today and it was a great privilege to have our registrar dr saki hussein sa to present our token of respect and appreciation to the chief guest i express my sincere thanks for his valuable contribution to this event your presence has indeed made this occasion even more memorable and motivating thank you sir our director of education dr gobakumar sir is a great source of support in all our activities thank you sir for delivering his valuable words of tribute to our beloved kns nair sir in the most befitting manner i would also thank our beloved director of research dr madhu subramanian sir for the meticulous introduction of the chief guest and for the guidance in arranging the event thank you sir our sincere thanks 
and also due to our dean dr mani chellapan sir for leading and supporting us all through thank you sir for delivering the welcome address and presenting the graphite drawing of shyam sundaran sir to his doctor i mean to his daughter uh, dr anupama ma'am and it is indeed our pride to announce that the artist miss reshma p is a ku alumni and presently pursuing her msc at tirupati agriculture university i also wish to thank dr roy stephen dean college of agriculture velaini for his concern and timely support our special gratitude to dean college of forestry and his team here for all the infrastructural support for the program and he has also felicitated this program thank you sir we all value the esteem presence of dr gida kuti ma'am who had headed the center for gender studies for quite a long time and former registrar of kerala agriculture university i also acknowledge the honored presence of dr indira devi ma'am emeritus professor and our former director of research and dr girija ma'am emeritus professor and our former registrar they are also attending the program online i also acknowledge the honored i am highly obliged to dr aram prasad sir our professor and former ade and his presence is a testament to his unwavering support and keen interest thank you very much sir and we are grateful to all the dignitaries here who have graced the occasion with their presence they include directors associate directors and faculty members and other staff and all our dear students and it's indeed your presence that made this event a success we are happy to declare our thankfulness to all senior university officers who have participated in this program let me express my gratitude to dr p o namir and his team at directorate of information system for their kind support on a formal note let me acknowledge the sincerity of my colleague ms jalia at center for gender studies for sharing the responsibilities and project staff for their timely service support from uh, department of agriculture extension especially my hod dr binu p boni ma'am and uh, professor dr j sri krishnan guti ma'am and uh, other faculty members at uh, department of agriculture economics dr prema dr anil kuriwala and other members and their support is gratefully accepted and also thanking our comparing team ms shilpa karad and ms navita i profusely thank all the faculty members staff and students who have attended either online or offline mode once again thank you one and all thank you thank you ma'am to wind up the program i request everybody to please stand up for the national anthem जय 
Jai 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 Jai